I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. p and Australia has a long and storied history with its first departure all the way back in 1932. The company is barely a decade away from reaching 100 years in service, and yet it has never operated a brand new purpose-built cruise ship, but it did get very close. For many of us, p Australia was how we got to have our very first cruise holiday experience. For me, that was back in 1999 on board Fair Princess, and I know for many of you it was even earlier than that on Fair Star. For others, you might have travelled on the Pacific Sky or Sun, or the Jewel, Dawn and Aria. p Australia sits within the Carnival Corporation lineup, and it has some pretty famous company stablemates, like Carnival Cruises, Princess, Holland America, Cunard, p and UK, Seaborn, Costa Cruises, and Aida. Of them all, p and Australia is the only cruise line to have never taken delivery of a brand new cruise ship. Every single vessel to come through the p and Australia fleet has been a company transfer, or more emotively, a hand-me-down. That's a pretty striking fact. We already know that per capita, Australians are among those to cruise the most out of anywhere on the planet, with almost one and a quarter million of us taking a cruise in 2019. And that number is only expected to grow now that cruising is back for everyone. Our cruise market is becoming even more saturated with choice, with bigger, newer, shinier objects coming in on the horizon from all corners of the globe. This summer season alone will see the five-year-old Celebrity Edge calling Australia home, along with a seven-month-old Resilient Lady. That's in addition to the Quantum-class ships from Royal Caribbean and the 2017 launched Majestic Princess. There are plenty of others too. In contrast, p Australia's three-ship fleet is made up of the 26-year-old Pacific Explorer, the 22-year-old Pacific Adventure, and the 21-year-old Pacific Encounter. All three ships began life with Princess Cruises before being transferred to P&O and undergoing extensive internal refurbishments. While I don't discount the comprehensive remodels that all three of P&O's ships underwent, particularly in their public spaces, which I think are quite stunning and belie the ship's true ages, there's no getting away from the fact that these vessels are pushing a quarter of a century in operation. So, has a new ship ever been on the horizon for P&O Australia? Well, it has, and it's quite the story. In early 2016, P&O announced that it had finalised the contract for its first ever new build. The 135,000 gross ton ship would be the cruise line's first that was built and designed from the ground up for its Australian and New Zealand cruise market. Of the announcement, P&O Australia's then president, Stir Mermel, said, our new build will be a ship like no other, reflecting the tastes of modern Australia and building on the ongoing evolution of p and Cruises product in recent years. We are incredibly excited to be creating this ship and can't wait to reveal details over the months ahead. But the planned new build wasn't to be. A company announcement in late 2016 confirmed that the new build would instead be transferred to Carnival Cruises and become the vessel that now sails as Carnival Panorama. At around the same time, Carnival announced that the 2008 built Carnival Splendor would transfer to P&O Australia in late 2019, offering the cruise line its newest cruise ship to date and increased capacity for over 3,000 guests. But less than a year after that, in September 2017, it was announced that plans had changed again and Carnival Splendor would remain with the Carnival fleet but instead transfer to Australia and sail year-round from Sydney. In its replacement, the 2001-built Golden Princess would be transferred from Princess Cruises to sail under the p Australia banner. So, in the space of less than two years, p Australia went from getting its first ever new build to getting a 2008-built Carnival Splendor to then finally ending up with the 2001-built Golden Princess. It's almost hard to believe. This topic has been on my mind for a long time, and I know based on what I read on social media that many of you have very strong opinions and feelings about this as well. It's very common to read feedback from Aussie and New Zealand cruisers expressing their dissatisfaction and, honestly, anger sometimes that p Australia just never receives a new build and is always stuck with the corporate hand-me-downs. 
Now, I've always loved the layout and public spaces on board the princess ships of that era, and to have the Pacific Adventure and Pacific Encounter sailing for P&O Australia is no bad thing. They're still lovely ships with beautiful public spaces, but a 25-year-old cabin with new carpet and pillows is still a 25-year-old cabin. As a company and as a cruise line, P&O Australia has played such an important role in our nation's love for cruising that to ignore that would be a mistake. Yes, there are plenty of newer and sexier options on the horizon and plenty more coming, but I think that P&O Australia still holds a very special place for a lot of people. Examining this recent history in some detail has really highlighted the argument that P&O Australia does not get the credit that it deserves from Carnival Corporation, and that bothers me. Whether they will ever take delivery of a new build is anyone's guess, but as the cruise industry continues to grow and cruise lines like Royal Caribbean consider sailing year-round from Australia, there's no doubt that P&O and its parent company Carnival Corporation will have to respond. Maybe not tomorrow and maybe not even within the next five years, but speaking as an Aussie that had their first cruise experience on board a P&O ship, I hope that the company one day gets its new build. Let me know in the comments, was P&O Cruises part of your first cruise experience and do you believe that they deserve a new build? If you're ready to book a cruise, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguide.com.au and if you haven't done so already, you can give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram at The Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you soon. And it's barely a decade away. What? Has been a transfer from another company. What? Every single fleet, what? In contrast, P&O Australia's fleet, 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 and only ever gets the hand-me-downs from its corporate brethren. Ba -ba -da -ba.